Hello guys, this is Arvind here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this amazing session on Linux Mint. So before we move any further, let us have a look at the agenda for today's session. We will start this discussion by knowing exactly what is Linux Mint and what are its various features. Then we will talk about the various pros and cons of Linux Mint. The third point would be the comparison of Linux Mint with the Ubuntu, which is another popular Linux based OS. And finally, in this session, we will talk about the installation part. I hope I'm clear with the agenda guys. Just a reminder in case you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do subscribe and also hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from Edureka. So without any further ado, let us begin with our first topic. What exactly is Linux Mint? Linux Mint is the first operating system that people from Windows or Mac are drawn towards when they have to switch to Linux in their work environment. Linux Mint has been around since the year 2006 and has grown and matured into a very user friendly OS. So if you talk about the definition Linux Mint is a community driven Linux distribution that is based on Ubuntu. It strives to be a modern elegant and comfortable OS which is powerful as well as easy to use. Linux Mint is a free and open source OS designed for the use on desktop computers. It is one of the most popular desktop Linux distributions that millions of people currently use. So this was about the definition of Linux Mint. So now let us have a look at the features of the Linux Mint. Linux Mint's core difference is its user interface and the ease of interactivity. So like typical Linux distributions, Linux Mint includes an integrated and pre-installed application suite that provides the ability to search, download and install additional applications through its application package manager utility. The design of Linux Mint is very comfortable and easy to use, but at the same time, it is also powerful and configurable. So everything in Linux Mint is done to make the user experience better. User feedback is very important and it is used consistently to improve the quality of the Linux Mint. Linux Mint provides long term support releases which are normally supported for the duration of five years. So these were a few features of Linux Mint. So if you talk about the additions of Linux Mint, Basically, there are three editions of Linux Mint. The first edition is the Cinnamon Edition. This is the most modern, innovative, and full featured desktop version. The second one is the Mate, which is also more stable and a faster desktop version. And the third version is the XFCE version, which is the most lightweight and the most stable among all the three. So, the most popular version of Linux Mint is the Cinnamon Edition. Cinnamon is primarily developed for and by Linux Mint. It is sleek, beautiful, and full of new features. Linux Mint is also involved in the development of Mate Edition, which is a classic desktop environment, and it is the continuation of Genome 2, which is Linux Mint's default desktop between the year 2006 and 2011. Although it misses out a few features and its development is slower than the Cinnamon's, Mate runs faster, uses fewer resources, and is more stable than the Cinnamon Edition. The third edition is the XFACE edition or XFCE edition. It is a lightweight desktop environment. It doesn't support as many features as the Cinnamon or the Mate, but it is extremely stable and very light on the resource usage. So these were the three editions of Linux Mint. So the next question here is which version to choose 32 bit or 64 bit. So 64 bit is normally recommended. The 32 bit ISO images are provided for compatibility with the older computers. 32 bit processors are extremely rare nowadays. So if your computer was manufactured after 2004, you probably run a 64 bit processor. So one more thing that I would like to add here is that if you don't know which version of OS you are using. So what you do is go to my computer right click click on properties here. So here you can see your system type. So here it's written 64 bit OS and x64 based processor. So as far as my system is concerned, I'll be using the 64 bit OS. So coming back to the topic. I hope you're clear with this question 32 bit or 64 bit. So now let us talk about the pros and cons of Linux Mint. So if you talk about the pros, it works out of the box by providing full multimedia support and is extremely easy to use. So as discussed earlier, it is both free of cost and open source. Linux Mint is community driven. Here users are encouraged to send feedback to the project. This is done so that we can make use of their ideas to improve the Linux Mint. Linux Mint is based on Debian and Ubuntu and it provides approximately 30,000 packages 
and one of the best software managers Linux Mint is safe and reliable it requires very little maintenance because of a conservative approach to software updates a unique update manager and a robust architecture so these were a few pros of the Linux Mint now if you talk about the cons the first con is it doesn't have a device manager Linux Mint has a conservative approach to new technologies so if you are someone who keeps up with the latest technologies of flashy desktops then you may be better suited to a distribution such as Fedora instead of Linux Mint Mint is too large and requires a reasonably capable machine to run effectively so if your machine is particularly old and you can't upgrade it then you may be better off with something else instead although Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu it differs in many ways from its sibling so not everything that is out there for Ubuntu will work with Mint. Also, the latest version of Mint will not be based on the latest version of Ubuntu. It is invariably one or two releases behind. And the last con that I can think of is the absence of PPA. PPA is nothing but the personal package archive. So adding a PPA to your sources and then installing a software from a PPA is a great way to break your install. It is possible that it may not happen with every PPA software initially, but it will happen eventually. So these were a few cons of Linux Mint. Coming to the next part of this session, that is the comparison of Linux Mint with the Ubuntu. So there are a few parameters which we will be using for the comparison of these two very popular operating systems. So the first parameter is the user interface. So Linux Mint has a very faster workflow and is very easy to use. Whereas in Ubuntu, it is not better than the Linux Mint. The performance of Linux Mint is faster and lighter than Ubuntu. Whereas Ubuntu is a bit slower than Linux Mint. If you talk about the memory usage, Linux Mint has lesser memory usage, whereas Ubuntu has a higher memory usage. The community for Linux Mint is a smaller community, whereas for Ubuntu, it is a very large community. If you talk about the distribution, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. Whereas Ubuntu is based on the Debian. Now the desktop environment in Linux Mint is Cinnamon, XFCE and Mint as we have already seen previously. Whereas the default environment in Ubuntu is called Unity. The next parameter is the pre-installed software. So in Linux Mint important applications are installed by default. Whereas in Ubuntu this feature is absent. And the last point here is the usability. So normally Linux Mint is recommended for beginners whereas Ubuntu is recommended for professionals and preferred by developers. So this was the comparison between Linux Mint and the Ubuntu. Now coming to the next part of this session that is the installation. So while there are some computers that come with Linux Mint pre-installed, it is much more likely that you'll be installing it onto a machine that already has an OS. So there are two approaches here that you can take. Either install it over your existing OS, effectively deleting it or install it alongside the original OS. So there's one more option here of dual booting. So with dual booting, you have two OSs installed on the same computer, but you use only one of them at a time. So this approach sacrifices flexibility. So in order to use the apps of one of the OS, you need to shut down the other. So in this session, we will be focusing on installing Linux Mint in the virtual machine. So I'll quickly show you how do you do that. So you just need the virtual machine or the Oracle virtual box installed on your system. So if you have installed this, so what you can do here is click on machine here and click on new. So here it says create new virtual machine. So you can name this machine such as Linux Mint or whatever that you want. So type Linux and Ubuntu based 64 bit. Okay, click on next here. So here normally the recommended memory sizes minimum should be 1 GB. But if possible, give it 2 GB, that is 2048 MB. So click on next here. It is asking about hard disk. So as of now, create a virtual hard disk. The recommended size of the hard disk is 10 GB. Okay. So click on create hard disk file type. So here, click on the default that is the VDI virtual box disk image. Click on next. Okay. So storage on physical hard disk by default, it is dynamically allocated and can proceed with the by clicking next here. So file location and size. So the recommended size is 10 GB as previously mentioned here. So but I'd suggest you to if possible give it to 20 GB. You have allocated 20 GB here and click on create. 
so as you can see here this linux mint has been added here so to start this os you just need to double click on it and it will start so here it says select startup disk okay so here what you need to do is you have to go to the official linux mint website as you can see here linuxmint.com you have to go on this website and click on download and as discussed here we are selecting the most popular edition that is a cinnamon edition and 64 bit os so when you click here 64 bit this version will be downloaded and approximately the size of this file is 1.87 gb so once you download it you have to select it here i've already downloaded this so i'll select this and click on open okay so as you can see here the iso image has been selected here and click on start so this might take a few minutes okay guys so as you can see here we are on the home screen here so here what you need to do is click on the start menu here click on administration and here you can see install linux mint okay so click on install linux mint okay so here you need to select the language here i have selected english here click on continue select the keyboard layout english uk us whatever you want click on continue so preparing to install linux mint and you can check this box here install third party software click on continue so basically this is just the permission that the os is seeking from you to install any third party software for various purposes so now it is preparing to install the linux mint and all the packages and drivers so this computer currently has no detected os what would you like to do so we will go with the first operation here erase disk and install linux mint so this is selected by default and now we can click on install now click on continue here so this might take a few minutes here to install the entire os okay so it is asking for the region here so i've selected our country here india okay so kolkata this is fine this is for basically the time zone click on continue so here you can create a user by typing your name say for example arvin computer's name is arvin virtual box your username arvin11 choose a password here whatever password that you like okay click on continue so it is copying files now so linux mint is being installed now so this might take some time So guys the installation has finished here now as you can see here you can continue with the os or you can restart so i suggest you better restart your system so clicking on restart so once it restarts it'll ask you for the username and password that you enter while creating the user and after that once you enter the username and the password you will be landing on the home page of the linux mint os So guys as you can see here i have restarted the machine and now it is asking for the password that i entered while creating the user so now i will enter the password and press enter so once you enter the password you can see the home screen here so this was all about the installation of linux mint so with this we have come to the end of this session i hope it was useful for you and pretty informative so if you have any queries or doubts you can post them in the comment box below and we will try to get back to you as early as possible thank you so much i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning